If you've been watching from the beginning of this series, you know that we're covering step number four, which will be about adjusting entries. So we've just made it past the midpoint of the accounting cycle, working our ways towards the finish. I definitely applaud you guys for covering all these concepts because the accounting cycle is a really comprehensive circular model and there's a lot of different interrelated uh, confusing parts. But in this tutorial we're going to be covering the theory behind adjusting entries. I'll be providing an example to kind of tie everything together, help you understand. And I'll also be providing some supplement uh, adjusting entry videos to kind of give you an idea of all the different adjusting entries that might come up on a quiz or a test. So hopefully that helps. And let's actually go over some rules. So I actually kind of enjoy adjusting entries. They're actually one of the things I found pretty fun to do within financial accounting. Let me just get rid of this layer. Bring up these rules I've come up with to help you to help guide you through this really confusing period about adjusting entries. And the first one is that adjusting entries are all about revenues and expenses. So uh, adjusting entries look like journal entries. We'll have a debit and a credit. And one type of adjusting entry or a revenue adjusting entry might look something like this. We might have unearned revenue being debited and revenue being credited. So this would demonstrate that unearned revenue is being converted to revenue and being reported on the income statement thus having uh, earned that revenue and it being because obviously unearned revenue does not show up on the income statement only earned revenue does and we've now converted it to earned revenue performing this adjusting entry and that is a revenue adjusting entry and we also have an expense adjusting entry which might look something like this salaries expense being debited and salaries payable being credited and there's many different types of expense adjust entries like interest expense and credit interest payable but I just put here one type of expense adjusting entry and the one thing I wanted to note is that when you actually have an adjusting entry you'll never see revenues and expenses together as an adjusting entry so you'll never see debit salaries expense and credit revenue as an account you'll either see an expense adjusting entry or a revenue adjusting entry so they'll always be separate and the second rule is that these adjusting entries never involve cash they never ever ever involve cash so if you are performing an adjusting entry on a quiz or a test they ask you to write it down and you're debiting or crediting cash you can expect it to be wrong because you'll never have to debit or credit cash for an adjusting entry. You will have journal entries that do involve cash. So if you look at this adjusting entry right here, like I said, we have earned this revenue by writing down this adjusting entry. But the initial journal entry would look something like this. Cash being debited and unearned revenue being credited, which means that we've received cash for a service that we haven't performed because unearned revenue means we haven't performed a service and when we actually perform the service we write down this adjusting entry which converts the unearned revenue to revenue so that shows that adjusting entries never involve cash adjusting entries are all about either revenue adjusting entries or expense adjusting entries never write down cash and the third, the third rule is that adjusting entries are used to show the passage of time or the passing of time. And that's a little ambiguous of a statement, but I'll, I'll kind of help clear that up through an example I'm going to provide in a second, which is about a payroll uh, for the month of August for a company. So let's, let's actually get rid of all of this and bring that up. So this is a payroll schedule for the month of August. And... And we're actually going to say that we are at we are at August 31st. So it's the end of the month. We're preparing for internal use our balance sheet and our income statement to kind of get an idea of our assets outstanding, our liabilities outstanding, our revenues, expenses for the month. And the green highlighted numbers, the 10th and the 24th, are 
paydays. And if you haven't noticed, I've actually written right here that the workers receive $1,000 bi-weekly, which means every two weeks. So on the 10th, they receive $1,000. On the 24th, they receive $1,000. And on the 7th of September, they'll receive another $1,000, which will actually be the basis of this example because this creates a problem when uh, the the when the payday actually falls into the next month because we'll actually have to perform an adjusting entry to help solve this this cutoff issue. So before uh, we talk about that, I thought I might note that this entry for uh, actually paying the workers will come up like this or it should be something like this where we'll be debiting salary's expense, crediting cash to show that we are paying them for their for their work, we're incurring an expense. And if you remember, we are preparing an income statement because it is the month end. And if you remember, an income statement does have revenues and expenses. And in this example, we're talking about a certain expense, which is salaries expense. Now, if you look at this entry on the 24th, we have debit, salaries, expense, credit, cash, and that's going to be the last salaries, expense entry because that is the last time we pay them in the month of August because for the rest of August, we're not actually paying them in cash. So, so what's going to happen is the salaries, expense, if we, we're not actually recording anything for this, this week, then we will not have reported any expense for the last week of August. So our salaries expense will be understated, which is not a good thing. It's, it won't be an accurate income statement. It won't show all of the expenses we have incurred in the month of August. And this will also cause um, a conflict with the matching principle. And if you remember from a lecture in class, you might have heard that the matching principle, the point of it is to show that the expenses, or I should actually say that the, the revenues that are earned throughout August, so let's say in August we earned revenues for every single week, and in the month of August we want to show all of the expenses that generated those revenues, and if we don't show the last, the last week of expenses, then we're not matching all of the the revenues earned with the expenses that we incurred. So we need to show all of the expenses for the month of August and to do that we're going to perform an adjusting entry in this last week. So uh, the adjusting entry that we're actually going to perform is going to be an expense adjusting entry because obviously this is not a revenue adjusting entry. We're not earning any money. We're paying employees. And if you remember from the rules, let me just bring them down. It's kind of clustered up there at the top. Um, adjusting entries are all about revenues and expenses, which means that we're going to be either making a revenue or an expense entry. We've stated that we're making an expense entry. And this is not going to involve cash. So right away, you know we're not using the account of cash. So what are we going to use? Well, like I said, salary's expense is understated unless we we report another expense for this week. So we're going to debit salary's expense. And since we're not paying them yet until the, the 7th of September, we need to show that we are going to pay them, which is salaries payable, which is a liability showing that we're going to pay them in the future. And the number associated for each of these accounts will be, since we're paying them $1,000 bi-weekly or every two weeks, that means we're paying them $500 every week, which is half of $1,000. So we're just going to say debit salaries expense 500 and credit salaries payable 500. And this is known as an accrued, accrued expense adjusting entry and I'm just abbreviating the adjusting entry part because it's really long and I don't have a lot of room but so the term accrued is synonymous with 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 owing because as you can see the 
the amount payable to the, the employees has not actually been paid yet. So we actually are not reporting an outflow of cash. We're actually reporting uh, that we owe them money, which is an accrued expense because accrued always means owing. So that is our adjusting entry. And when we now report this adjusting entry, all of the expense for August will be matched with all of the revenues for August and our income statement will be correct in that we've reported everything in the period of August. So that was one type of adjusting entry. And we'll learn about the others and I actually have created this table to just show you that we've covered this this one right here, accrued expenses. You'll actually notice that these these two adjusting entries are opposites of each other and these two are opposites as well. So prepaid expenses are that we've we've paid for them uh, initially and accrued expenses are that we haven't paid for them yet but we've actually uh, consumed the expense or we've we've used the expense or, or have incurred an expense I should actually say. And we'll learn about all these different adjustment entries in the supplement videos I am going to provide. So uh, hopefully you understand the accrued expense entry I just uh, went over and I'll provide examples in the next videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate. You can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.